there, it's Ina here, and yes, I'm working on another project where I want to use these old records, they're the real sturdy ones, and I went ahead and put two hangers on, two of them already, and I show you how I will do it on the third one, whoops, I can find the beginning of my string. The reason I'm adding the hanger now is because I want to treat this as an assemblage piece, and if I do it now, the leftover strings will just get incorporated into whatever else I will be adding to it. So I'm putting the loop in a way that I have two different size ends as that way. The knot will kind of go in the middle and it'd be a lot easier to cover it up with whatever will go on top of it. So there is a third one all right so that's pretty sturdy it's not going to go anywhere and these will even be more stable after I add all the other things to it now I'm thinking of just working on one with you together as my desk has a limited space and then uh, I will probably do the others in similar fashion and then at the end I will show you all three so here we go so I will be adding some texture to all of these uh, records now this is my leftover texture paste from my big container from the last one I used and it did get a bit dry and hard and I can't really use it for stencils anymore but I think it will work just fine on here as the records are pretty tough and I can put some pressure on it and get it to mold where I want it so I will be covering the centers of all three of these record with this stubborn texture paste and I will be back as soon as that's done and as soon as this texture paste is dry. The records are all covered with uh, texture paste, they're all dry, and then I went ahead and I added a coat of gesso to all of them. That's dry by now too, and I will go ahead and use my glue and some doodads, uh, broken jewelry and buttons and beads and odds and ends to give this a bit more texture. covering all these uh, records with some three-dimensional items. There are all kinds of things, pieces of an earring and beads and game pieces. I added a little more burlap to this one. This is the one I started with you. And there's a little bow and some beads here too, a gear and so on. Pretty simple. And I'll go ahead and show you the other ones too just so it gives you more ideas of what you can use on a project like this. Here I added a little bit of cheesecloth to the background, just for a little extra texture. And this is a little kid's toy. It looks like a vase with a horse, kind of an ornamental old fashioned vase. Again, beads, there's a little paper clip, the fancy button. There are some tiny beads over on a string and I added them here. A star, some, uh, bling, things like that, a little chain, and let's see, this one here, I added a couple of pieces of lace, one on this side, it has a little flower design, and one over here, just again for a little more interest, that's a little bracelet, a wooden wheel, no idea where it came from, there's one of those silver coyote, um, I think it's a uh, belt buckle or something. There's some more beads, toys, little jewelry, broken jewelry. There are some roses, a little bit of Christmas decoration. There are a couple of uh, washers over here and things like that. So 
pretty much um, anything that had an interesting shape and I didn't make these uh, too fat like in some of my other assemblage pieces I used really big things like doorknobs and so on this are fairly smaller things it keeps it fairly flat so my next step will be to cover this in gesso so let's set two aside and I'm just gonna get one started and then I will finish them off camera and of course I will show them to you again before I go on with the next step so as I've already gessoed the background this goes fairly fast but again you want to get into all the little valleys and corners is all dry as you can see I had to use about two or three coats uh, and still some of the elements were so pigmented that you can still like here you see a little red but when I once put my own colors on it it'll be fine now I will be using probably acrylic paint some sprays maybe some of my pigment powders but all my ingredients you will see in the captions so enjoy it's completed and here's one more look for you a close-up look and I'm very happy with the way these colors blended they're very uh, bright and brilliant and I really like all the different shades I was able to get and because of the multiple colors on this one I call it done I didn't feel it needed anything else so here is number one completed now for the next one, the one with the vase and the horse, I decided to use very bright uh, green as well as some yellow. And then I used some copper to bring out the texture, a little bit of shading and highlighting. And here I decided it needed a little something else. So I added these metal elements. There is a little bronze horse, looks like it came from a chess game. There's a fleur de lis and a little beef. And it's kind of nice because there's already a horse there, so I thought it kind of complemented it. And I love the brightness of this. And yeah, I think, as you can see, it has a lot of shimmer and shine. And then the third one here, I used turquoise and also some gold paint and some different light blues. And when I was all done with that, I used copper here for bringing out texture and shadows and highlights. And here too, I decided to add another element. So I added these tiny gold beads combined with even tinier little pearls to fill in some spaces here for a little extra interest. 
So yeah, these are definitely the colors I personally like a lot. And I think it came out, yeah, very nice. I like this one. And of course, on all three of them, you probably noticed, I went ahead and colored in the string. And if I thought about it beforehand, I would have probably chosen a black one to start with. But it's okay. I just colored it with black acrylic paint so it blends a little more. I mean, it, it's okay to see that it comes in here. That's okay. But I didn't want it the beige. It didn't seem to match at all. So anyway, here it is. And of course, they would make a really nice set if they hang together on a wall. But I think they will also look nice just on their own. Now, the idea for me to use records as a substrate came from my friend Maria. Thanks, Maria. And it was just a really fun thing to work with. And I think I will look out for more records and might do something else for them because they're nice and sturdy. And the shape just um, gives a nice variety, of course, to work uh, with a circular substrate. So I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you enjoyed this idea and it inspired you to give it a try. Thank you so much for coming. Bye bye for now.